Shingeki no Kyojin, episode 7 through 12 review. Before we go any further, let's stop and consider what's happened so far. These six episodes were very different from the first six episodes when you look at them in a purely structural sense. The first six were really all about setting up the universe and the characters and the backstories and the motivations and all that kind of stuff. It covered probably about five years worth of story, whereas the next six episodes covered about two hours at the very most. These episodes were more about telling the story rather than expositing about the characters. Although we met a lot of new guys, most of the colorful characters that we met before were sort of noticeably absent. I'm looking at you, Reiner, you suspicious dickhead. He never did explain how he managed to escape the Titans when they came to his home village five years ago. Anyway, Eren can turn into a Titan, so that's a thing. I heard a lot of people talking in the comments about how they could have done without this and they wish the show was just about people fighting titans. You know, rather than bringing in this extra element to make Eren more special than the rest of the characters. And, you know, I get it! Because, frankly, the show would have been able to stand on its own two feet without that particular aspect of it. But that would be like saying One Piece would be a great show without the Devil Fruits. Which is true, it would still be a great show, but that's what makes it One Piece. Besides, Eren sort of needs this if he's going to succeed in his goal to kill all Titans. A mediocre kid with a whole bunch of determination cannot solve this conflict unless he has something that puts him on another tier. Because let's face it, Eren without Titan powers would mean that the series ended when Eren got eaten by that Titan. Realistically, that's how it would have went down, and that notion is kind of sad. Clearly. Dad's mysterious injections is what gives Eren his titan powers. And I'm just saying, Dad travels a lot. And the injections mess with memory, so we can't necessarily know just how many people Dad has experimented on. I'm just saying that some of the abnormal titans have a habit of disappearing and appearing out of nowhere in a cloud of smoke, including the colossal titan and the armored titan. I'm just saying. It's worth thinking about, although I must wonder what people's motivations are for allowing the Titans to march in. It could be some kind of twisted reasoning like, I want to end mankind's suffering, or whatever. That's not particularly clear to me, but if the abnormal Titans turn out to not be humans, then I'll be really embarrassed. I mean, they clearly are because of their intelligence and their tendency to appear and disappear and how they make plans and all that. I'm just saying. Let's talk about the elite troops. We got two separate representations of what the elite looks like. We got Ian, Rico, and Mitabi who are like, eh, pretty good, whatever, take them or leave them. Then we have the recon guys, including Commander Levy, who is awesome. I kind of see him as Eren 2.0, in that he has the same determination to kill Titans, but he also has the skills to back it up. Plus, apparently he's a germaphobe, which will result in hilarity. He made quite a moving speech to his dying comrade, assuring him that his death had meaning. Compare that to the first episode, when that soldier couldn't even tell a grieving mother caressing the severed arm of her son that he died with a purpose. Although he seems like a huge weirdo, he's also a super badass as well. Obviously I like him, and it's not just because you guys told me I'd like him. But as of right now, he's a character who's wandering around peripherally. I can expect he's gonna become more important later on, but until then, I will wait patiently. Pixis is another cool character, and he seems to be walking a line between perpetually drunk, or that's just his personality. Either way, there are very few bad things which can be said about him. He takes responsibility for his actions in the present and the past. He's dedicated to the people, so he basically told the Lord guy to STFU. He's very open-minded, more so than the guys who first found Eren, who just wanted to kill him to be safe. But my personal favorite thing about him is how straight he is. He is not a bullshitter in any sense of the word, and that is something I can relate to. He gave people the option of deserting with no consequences, because he knew that it would be useless to have whiny bitches fighting against the Titans. 
but he made sure to guilt trip the hell out of them, so they felt like shit instead of being happy and relieved. Pixis is a guy I really like, and I want to see him in action, and I hope he doesn't die horribly. Armin got to have his glorious coming out and stepping up and realizing his place in the team and the world. But I do feel as though they're trying a little too hard to push the Armin is smart personality trait on me. So let's look at a couple examples. First, he went off and retrieved Hanes when Mikasa and Eren went off to save Mom which didn't really require all of that much foresight. If he had been there and been like, guys, grab a board and we can create leverage and rescue her, then okay, that would be good. Second, he had to convince everyone, no, don't kill Eren, which he essentially failed at, because if Pixis hadn't come along with a calm head, then they'd all be dead. Third, his idea to draw away all the men so that Eren could go and get the boulder to plug up the wall resulted in the death of a fifth of the men. But I'll give him that it was a good plan, albeit a risky one, to lower everyone down with the guns to shoot the titans in the eyes. As I said in my previous review, I will not hate on this kid though, because in spite of all of his fear and his weaknesses, he still acts. But I haven't seen enough convincing evidence of his brilliant tactician abilities in order to believe that quite yet. And he's still not quite a main character as far as I can classify him. I don't know what I need in order for him to evolve in my mind, but whatever it is, I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward to when it happens, though. I could honestly talk for another ten minutes about this section of episodes, but I want to leave it here. And I'm glad that I'm moving into the realm of the unknown, so I don't know what's happening next because I haven't read this far in the manga. You guys are being champs at keeping the spoilers back. I'm legitimately surprised that I've made it this far without being spoiled. I'm really excited to watch the next episode because I'm pretty sure I had a nightmare about John dying and I'd like to see him get out of that situation. But as I mentioned, of course, anyone can die at any time, so it's very stressful. Next, I'm watching episodes 13 and 14. And just like before, I'll watch 15 and 16, 17 and 18, and then I'll look back at 13 through 18. At this point, the season has finished, so we'll definitely go to the end. I'll see you next time. Bye!